Hello everyone, this is Mark Maloon from markmaloon.com, helping data scientists get the job of their dreams. And today I have a very special guest with us, Mr. Ted O'Brien from Starbridge uh, Partners. And he is a recruiter, and more importantly, he is a recruiter that specializes entirely on placing data scientists, data analysts, and data engineers. And Starbridge has been, well, Ted actually founded Starbridge Partners in 2013. And uh, as far as we know, um, it is the only firm that is focused entirely on the data science market. So, Ted, thank you very much for giving us your time and your attention uh, today and helping us out. We've got a lot of data scientists who are looking to break into the field and I know they've got a lot they've already given me a lot of questions to ask you so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, Starbridge and what you do thanks mark uh, great to be here uh, happy new year to everybody um, so I uh, my background I'll just touch on a few things and uh, give you a little perspective of why I can probably be helpful to uh, to our audience today uh, my background uh, out of after college was uh, around custom software development in the internet space, e-commerce predominantly. Uh, when that uh, field crashed, uh, sort of crashed uh, in 2000, I got into recruiting. So about 17 years of recruiting experience. Uh, started off for the first eight or nine years in capital markets recruiting, which is around um, you know buy side and sell side institutional trading. Uh, so quanti quantitative trading fixed income, equity analysts, um, those kinds of things. And uh, as the capital market space kind of um, shrunk a little bit um, and uh, I saw big data as the next thing on the horizon, I got very, very excited about it. And about five years ago, dove in, decided to totally change my business, uh, learned everything I could, and I've uh, been doing um, data scientists, uh, data engineers, and uh, big data analysts Ever since, started my own company about three, four and a half years ago, and uh, and here we are today. Right. Okay, Ted, thanks for that. Um, it gives us a little bit better idea about how you got started in this and what your background is. And uh, this is great news because we've got a lot of data scientists who really want to know what goes through the mind of a recruiter or a hiring manager. So if you could give us a sense of the big picture, um, what is the recruiter or hiring manager thinking? Um, give, us a, give us a chance to step into your shoes. Sure, and I think this is really important. Um, as you can probably imagine, as most, uh, and I know our audience is a little bit more of the newbie or recent grad, um, whether that's a master's or, or a PhD, um, or maybe even somebody uh, coming from a different field or uh, to get into data science, or so really dealing more with that audience. So I did think it was important to, to let this audience know that generally speaking, Recruiters do not get asked to fill these roles. And the reason is that they want to pay us, and they pay us significant fees um, to find the experienced people. So it's not all the time. On occasion, especially um, when you're talking about PhDs with interns and very robust papers and things like that, we will get opportunities to fill those roles. And, and I'm speaking from personal experience because probably recruiters out there, if not now, in the future, will fill uh, roles at larger companies especially, uh, helping them to find <clears throat> perhaps that next class of uh, recent grads. And I bring all this up because I really don't want or I want the recent grads and some of these other newbies to spend their time wisely in, in looking for that for that first for that first role because that first role is critical you know there is not there's a shortage of data science talent at the experience level even, even starting from in, from my point of view from what i've seen about a year plus of experience it quickly gets there becomes a shortage and if you keep going up the chain of more experience it gets smaller and smaller and smaller so when i do a vp or an SVP of data science search, the pool of candidates I can pull from is so small, you know, especially when they want domain experience. Uh, it is really, it's a very, very tough task. Sometimes I'll work on those roles for six months, nine months. I'm not kidding. 
Um, but at the at the at the lower level, where there's no experience or very little experience, we know there are tons and tons of graduates. So the big thing is how do you stand out? How do you get recognized? How do you prepare for the job market and get that first that first job? And I think, um, and I get asked this a lot. I get asked for help, and I'm, and I think as part of my personality and part of the way we do our business, we do want to help people, even though we can't make fees off of them now. We will, perhaps in the future, we will help them. We'll help them now, and if we're two years in, three years in, we'll get them that next move up the ladder, and um, so. I do want to focus on what I've seen and how I've helped some people so far uh, get those get those first gigs. So, to start with, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say here in a long-winded way is, I would not rely on recruiters. I would not rely on them. I would not ignore them completely, but I would not spend too much time with them. I would spend, depending on where you are in the process. Are you? Did you just graduate, or are you a sophomore, or you know, are you just going into that master's program? You know, is it early or later? If it's early, then I would do things some uh, do things differently. You know, I would um, anticipate where the where the white space is. Where where are the opportunities going to be? I would do outreach very early to try to build relationships. Um, you know, a lot of this I'm. It comes down to to hustle, to getting uh, your communication down of of how you're going to communicate what you're good at, getting your um, getting work examples um, up on GitHub, getting a blog perhaps set up, getting a branding yourself in a, in a way on Twitter around a certain specialty that that uh, that you love and that it has. As a, as a need in the marketplace, um, you know, I, I, I tell I tell recruits at every level that this is this is the way you need to think. That hiring is risk management, and that the people who are going to hire you need to feel comfortable. So, how do they start eliminating risk? Well, fine if you if you're if if you're somebody with no experience, then what do you? What are the things that a hiring manager can look at? They can see where you went to school. Did you go to? Did you go to a top twenty school? If you did, that's helpful. But what if you didn't? Then what? Right. So then you can look at um, where did you internship? Where did you do your internships at? Did, was a was it a name brand company where we know that they have very good internship programs? Um, what did you do your papers on? Can I read them? Uh, did you do some projects? Are they anywhere I can look? Uh, is your code up on GitHub? You know, these are proof things. But I would say you can cover all those things. But what is even better, probably, a little bit better, is a connection. It's uh, somebody somewhere at some firm, hopefully 20 firms, hopefully 50 firms, you know somebody, somebody's from the program you were in, a friend who's older, who works there, um, something you made out, uh, out and about at a conference, somewhere, that personal connection is to me one of, the, one of the critical things. And we'll talk more about this as we talk about the different aspects of interviewing and things like that, but um, being able to um, to communicate what you studied, what you're good at, being personable, being likable. These are all very underrated skills that every data scientist, data engineer, big data analyst, practically everybody needs to have. And if you don't have them naturally, you really do need to work on them. Um, and there, there are definitely things you can do to uh, to hone that. So, you know, um, I did want to I did want to show the audience, and you know, a lot of this, if you think about it, for for especially for new folks coming, you know, recently graduating or about to graduate, 
the task of getting attention and proving your value to a hiring manager is very similar to what I go through. I have to also approach the same people. I have to approach the chief data scientist, the head of analytics, the people who are actually going to hire, and I have to get their attention. And I have to get them because they're busy. And there are a lot of recruiters out there. So how did I go about you know, building my brand, getting their attention um, to get their business and things like that? And um, it, it just worked out that I, I follow a lot of what um, I think uh, what Gary Vaynerchuk does. And this is a really good book um, for, for your folks. Some of them will know him, some will not. Um, I won't get too deep into him, but he is, he is one of the preeminent, uh, he was first a, uh, he ran a business, then he was an investor, he runs VaynerMedia, now he's a client of mine, and um, it really teaches you how to brand yourself, how to get, um, and that's, and branding builds trust, and that's, these are, you know, these are all things um, that anybody can do uh, at any, at any stage of their career. Um, you know, Mark, you're doing it. Uh, I'm doing it. How, how am I doing it? Well, I decided very early on that I want to be the best data science recruiter. So I learned everything I could, and then I went about building a blog that is now ranked in the top 50, and I share content all day long on first what interests me and to learn, and then to get it out to help other people to learn. So my face started showing up. In Twitter, I did the same thing, and I connected with as many people as I could in the industry that were, you know, that were that were doing the next great thing. And um, just I went to lunch with people, you know, like I went to conferences. You know, all these things start to start to add up, and people start to uh, to trust, and that's that comes back to the risk management thing. It's like if somebody can go online, look you up, see your Twitter account, see that you're tweeting all the time about this particular aspect of data science or analytics that you are you feel you're good at, that you are a subject matter expert on or getting there or at least have a passion for it, then, um, you know, those are things that are going to stand out. And that's, you know, Gary always teaches how, how, to, how to go about getting attention from the right people and f- for, for all the newly graduated or, or people trying to get into the field, you can find like practically every chief data scientist, SVP, VP of data science, uh, chief data officer, all any of these key people are online somewhere and you can do what he does and this is what I do is you give value, you add value, you give them, an, shoot them an article on something that's um, you know they're interested in, that's about their business and you don't ask for anything. Not right away, and you keep you keep adding a little value, a little value, and and after he does jab, 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 which means three things: offer three things at different times of value, and then ask for something. And in this case, it could be an internship. It could be at least you've you've given something. You have some reciprocity, and you can say, all right, you know, how what would I need to do to get an internship? And maybe you do this for your top 20 targets, uh, and you, you do it over three months or six months, you know, and then the rest of them you're doing a little bit more mass uh, approaches, which we're going to talk about. But, um, you know, this to me is the absolute straightforward, must, I think it's just so smart to do this, um, whether you're new or further along, to just really build a personal brand and to let people know what you're interested in. There's so many opportunities to do that online. It's going to make hiring a lot easier or, or, or getting a job a lot easier, getting indoors a lot easier. And then after you're at companies, um, you know, for a few years, then you then you've learned on the job and you've proven yourself. And there is a giant shortage out there. And so, you know, again, it's it's really that first job or two, and then after that, you're going to have recruiters like me um, 
calling you pretty regularly, <laughs> sometimes probably annoyingly, and a lot of recruiters who, who don't yet really know what they're talking about yet and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, you're going to have to see who you should spend time with. But, you know, we're here to talk about how to get that first job. So that's that's just some basic – I wanted to give that top-level um, piece – right there before we dive into some of these specific questions because really it's again it's like be self-reliant don't wait on other people go out take action build a brand around yourself get your stuff up online start early uh, to get those internships communication you know get your pitch down um, find out who works at different companies email people email people leave messages you know you have to just hustle 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 there's too many people who have a very similar profile to most of you um and you you have to find a way to stand out you have to find a way to get attention and then after that once you're in then hopefully you're good and you get noticed and uh then your career is off to the races wow you said so, so many you said so many great things there. It's uh, there's so many things that I could follow up with, and uh, yeah, I agree that uh, you know I see a lot of people out there who just um, you know take some courses and so forth and start flinging their resumes out willy nilly. And a lot of the things you talked about, branding yourself as a data scientist, giving value first before asking for something, um, these are very very important things. 